Hi, I'm Sam Feifel. I'm the editor of Security Systems News. I'm here on the ISC East show floor with Kevin Engelhardt. Yes, sir. He's VP and General Manager of Enterprise Security at Diebold. Thank you for being here, Kevin. Appreciate it's my it. my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, one of the trends that we've been following in the industry and uh, one of the things I think Diebold is a little bit out ahead on is this idea of getting away from installation-based revenue and getting more towards recurring revenue, you know, stringing out the uh, revenue so it's not quite so lumpy. Uh, what are you guys doing to, whether it's emphasizing service or emphasizing different ways of selling, what, what are you doing at Diebold? Well, as a systems integrator, what we've been able to do is really leverage what Diebold's done for the last 150 years. I mean, we have the luxury as a $3 billion organization to have a, a service revenue backlog that's pretty much half of our business. So it does, it does really create a very financially stable organization. So when you have an economy that goes up and down, left and right, um, we don't have to take such corrective actions from a, um, from a services point of view, where you go into markets and you find that organizations have basically pulled resources out and they've looked at more of a regional services approach. So from our perspective as a, as a pure systems integrator, as we approach large systems in any specific geography, we have the benefit of having the Diebold Services organization to be hand in hand with us. So, so we do a strong installation, we work hand in hand with our service organization to bring them up to the product and project specific aspects and then they then take it moving forward. So once we finish the installation and all the engineering design commissioning, they're fully trained on the systems, the client requirements, and then they take it from a services point of view, or we take it from a services point of view really. But the, the true benefit when I speak to customers is that it's, it's not a ramp up. You know, right. people, people now, a lot of uh, what we're seeing is that as we approach different geographies and different applications, um, the, the competition more often than not says, well, if we're awarded the project, we'll just ramp up. And ours is actually the opposite. What we'll do is we'll take our very strong infrastructure and we'll specialize down to mm -hmm. your needs. And, and that's worked out very well for us. Has the uh, end user gotten a lot more demanding in the last two years? Are they asking you to do more for the same amount of dollars? And is that impacting your ability to sell profitable jobs? That's one of the things I'm hearing is there's this margin loss and you know, mm -hmm. to get the job, I've got to bid it lower and lower and lower. Are you seeing that same trend? I, I am in certain vertical markets. I think if you're in a, in a low bid, um, if it's a core shell construction market that's very GC based, then, then yes, because the general contractors are getting pushed down, so obviously every subcontractor down the line is getting pushed down. Where I'm seeing it is that if on the higher end or the, the critical infrastructure, the petrochems, the, the port authority type work environments all around the country, they're actually being more um, open. They're asking for solutions because technology is changing so fast. And you know, you come to a show like this, and there's probably 500 different cameras on the floor. And which one do they use? And which one integrates? And which one's going to be around tomorrow? Who's who's financially yeah. stable? So, so when we approach our customers, we really look at them um, as a, we look at ourselves as consultative partners. We really make sure we listen twice as much as we speak initially, so we understand really what their user what the user's application is. From there, we really try to develop strong solution sets and then, and then move forward. In that environment, because of the value add, price is still a significant component, but it's not, it's not the most important component because it's not the cost to install something, it's the life of what you're installing. And, and we really try to approach it from saying, this is going to be a long, long-term relationship. So I'm not as worried about the margin on day one as I really am is about where we are as a partnership on you know, day 500. And that, that's how we've approached it. So I think that's, that's benefited us uh, in, you know, in this kind of downturn that we've, we've been all trying to fight through. Sure. You mentioned critical infrastructure, and when you talk about critical infrastructure, you start hearing about new regulations that are coming in, whether it's government-related or sure. it's, uh, you know association-related. So you've got TWIC and HSP12 and CFATS, and mm -hmm. how has that affected the way that you do business with those customers? So one of the things that we're doing is, is we're trying to be, again, go back to a value add, and I think that there's so many of these acronyms and new regulatory um, controls that some of the users don't even completely understand them. And so one of the things that we're doing moving forward, and we've actually have started already, is we're developing, let's say, a line card solution. Instead of it being product-based, it's solutions-based. So we'll approach critical infrastructure and put a solutions-based line card together. So as we work with our with our people, our clients, or 
of prospective clients in those markets, we can say, well, you know, here's some best practices, here's a solutions line card, are you aware of all these things? Additionally, what we're m migrating towards in 2010 is doing solution days where we bring end users in, consultants and experts for the field, get everybody together in the room in geographical areas, bring our customers in and allow people to share, you know, product, applications, solutions, and, and talk about it in a proactive sense, you know, getting ahead of the curve. It, it costs, you know, we look at our users and it's extremely more expensive if you're chasing the regulatory controls as, as, as opposed to getting out ahead of them. So, you know, we're a big proponent in working with our clients of making sure they understand what's coming down the pipe, and if we can be a value add in that, we're, we're right by them all the way through. Sure. One of the interesting things about CFATS is it really imposed government standards on private industry mm -hmm. in a way that's a little bit new and different. Um, are there other markets that we should be looking for where government's going to put similar regulations on them and you know where do you think they are? Where, where, what are you eyeing for markets that are going to be regulated more? Well, you know, what's really deemed critical infrastructure, I would say, you know, the water and the energy. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing more and more water agencies. We're talking to a lot of water agencies. We're talking to a lot of um, EPA, DEP type um, um, opportunities and and you can see that they're the designs that are around those applications are really migrating towards some of these same standards so you know besides the as we said the petrochems and all the other things it's actually morphing more into some of these other environmental control type agencies and so um, again we, we, we make sure that as much as possible we can tell them what we're hearing from DHS and, and some of the other um, government agencies we work with if, if we if we hear things are coming down we try to make sure our customers know in advance so if we're doing something from a design build point of view we make sure that those applications support what could happen two and three years down the road. Well unfortunately we don't have a looking glass we don't know what will be, what will be there two or three years down the road but it sounds like you guys are prepping for it. I want to thank you for being here today. It's my pleasure. Thank and you for the opportunity. Thank you all for watching. I'm Sam Pfeiffer with Security Systems News. This is Kevin Engelhardt with Diebold. Thank you all for watching. Great.